Rocks have a primeval quality. They, they've been around since way before humans were on the earth. What I paint now is essentially rocks. So the problem I have is how to make that rocky quality apparent in the paintings. And all the types of materials, techniques I, I use are there to, to try and convey that, that all those different kinds of qualities that you find in the rocky surfaces. I've always enjoyed being out of the landscape and since my move to Cornwall three years ago it seemed logical to try and develop an interest in an area of landscape which is close to where I live. The area almost adjacent to, to my studio seemed to be full of lots of rich potential. Although it's not a, a beautiful place, I think the artist has the capacity to make beauty within it. I go out there with, with the camera. Maybe sometimes you don't even take any photographs. So, but oft, often you see things that interest you and I'll, I'll take a series of photographs of, of, of those things. Because the rocks are so close to the, the sea and often get washed o over with, with the tidal influence, because it's a very high tide at, at Newman, you don't have the choice. You have to, you have to deal with, with, the, with the watery kind of quality that you see within the rocks because there are pools resting in it. You can hear the lapping of the water next to it. What I try and do is, is, is paint the rocks, but I'm sure there is a, a, the influence of, of, of the sea which is lapping around at my, at my feet as I'm taking these photographs. I start my work in, in, in lots of different ways, but it almost always starts off with a blank piece of paper. After looking at the photographs, it became apparent that I could get a similar kind of quality if I crumpled the paper so it, it resembled some of the striations in, in the rock formation. And I sprinkled the, the floor with, with pigment often two distinctly different types of pigments and scrub the paper in, into that. all the way through, I'll often look underneath the paper to see well, how much pigment has, has been sucked up in, into the surface of the paper or whether it's got to the areas that, that, I, that I need the image to be. Sometimes it hasn't done that, so you have put a little bit more pressure into the pigment. And other times it, it, you're almost taking it off by turning it over and brushing it off again and then applying it again. In the crumpled black rubbed paintings 
these these will all be re-stretched on onto canvas. So you you will, you won't see any of the stretch marks whatsoever. It will just see one one continuous flat area of of painting. Where I where I live now, it's on top of the studio. I, but I can't get to the studio from where I live. I have to walk around and then down a little road and go in the studio that way. I've always, I've always liked the idea of going to work because I suppose it's the uh, Protestant work ethic, but it's, it's as though you're, you, you've gone out to do something and then you can carry on and do it for the whole day. Originally, my studio was a, a boathouse at the turn of the century. And then it, it went through lots of different uses. And when I bought it, it was a, uh, it was a garage. Before I, before I moved to Cornwall, I had lived in the east end of London and had a studio in Hackney. Although the place I painted was in Derbyshire and it was uh, somewhere that i would known since childhood called Shiningcliff Wood. So I, I used to go up to Shiningcliff Wood from London every month or so to collect working material to work with in the studio. I often sit, sit down at, at my desk and look through the photographic material that I've collected over, over the months. Uh, and try and search for possibilities of, of, for making paintings or making initial starts for paintings. Looking at different ways of using line, different different textures that that, that I might be using, different different um, qualities of material that, that that are suggested from the photographs. I'm con continuously trying to think up different ways of or descriptions of the rock surface that, that from the photographic material that I bring back to the studio. Another way of, of transferring images onto paper has been to paint onto polythene sheeting. What I do is paint polythene with acrylic paint, often which is, has been diluted so it, it runs across the surface of the polythene. The, the paper is then placed o over the polythene. So the, the paint runs and ripples across the surface of the paper. This is then left until it's dried. But what it, what it does give you, a, a very random, often very fluid looking surfaces, which are, you would be unable to, to reproduce in any other way.
there was a magical quality in in producing the painting, in that you're not absolutely fully aware of everything that's going to happen. But the artist uses use of the accidents and manipulates them. Everything is done quite systematically, even though there are things that happen which which you are totally unaccounted for. It's the use of that unaccountability, and it's it's pointing it in, in a direction that allows the observer to see with some precision what the artist was trying to get at. Invariably, this process is, is repeated several times in order to get to the uh, consistency of paint and the layering of paint that I, I'm trying to achieve. All the paintings in the studio are being made for an exhibition to be shown at the Tate and St. Ives. And although they are conceived as separate diptychs, one painting placed on top of each other, they're also to be seen together, alongside each other and opposite each other, where each one tells you a little bit more about the specific place the paintings are, are from. This, this is the first time I've incorporated actual photographs in the finished pieces themselves. What I've, I've always done before is worked from photographs, but the actual use of actual photographic materials has, has never been conceived as part of a, a piece. And although the paintings previously allude to places, this means that what, you, what you're seeing is a a direct reference to an actual place. Rock has a very distinctive surface. It's, it's crisp, it's hard, it's tough, but, but there are some very subtle qualities within it. And the, this, this sort of crumple technique and rubbing it into it with, with pigment is an ideal way to suggest that surface. And on, on this painting, there are two distinctly different types of qualities. There's the hard edge, and then there is the kind of blobby. And it's the combination of the two, both of which are reflected in, in, in the rock itself, but the two things mingle together to give a, a kind of silhouette of shape which describe fissures and um, shadows within the surface. Often the work in the first instance is is produced in acrylic paint and when it's stretched on on the canvas I'll sometimes use go on using acrylic paint more often than not it, it'll be oil paint in this case what I'm going to do is put a, a, a layer of oil paint in a, in a very precise ang angular configuration on the top of the existing painting. So what, what I'll do is cut out a template in newsprint and then staple it to the surface of, of the painting. I'll use a very thick layer of, of white oil paint which then I'll try and mix colours up which resemble those in, in the rock surface itself and then drag these o over the white oil paint. So what you're left up with in the end is a, a, stri a, a striation across the surface which resembles things that you would see within the rock surface itself.
I've of, often used the element of, of disguise in, in my paintings, either disguising the way that they're, they're, they're made, the way that they're produced by the use of different types of materials, or disguising objects or elements with it within, within the work, where they, it looks like there are shards of, of, of rock embedded within, within the surface of, of the paint itself. And this, you, you have to look at, look at the painting over a, a long period of time to be aware that these, these things actually exist within, within the painted surface. No rock is, is, is the same as another rock. They have a form, they have a character. When you see them as a fallen rocks on, on the beach, what you're seeing is something unique, something which you will never ever see again in that form. And this is, this is why I do landscape painting. What we confront are not what we imagine we see. What we imagine we see is something called a landscape, which everybody recognises a landscape. It's seen as, as in isolation. What it's made up of are lots and lots of separate units. And we don't sit down and look at those separate units. We don't sit down and observe the, the different qualities of surface, the different edges, the different lines, the different weights. And as an artist, I, I, I would like to, to show people that if you were to sit down and observe quietly over a long period of time, then you might, you might see something which you'd never ever seen before.